Chapter Eight of Genji Monogatari. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Genji Monogatari by Murasaki Shikabu, translated by Suyamats Kenchio. Chapter Eight: Flower Feast. Towards the end of February, the cherry flowers at the front of the southern palace were coming into blossom, and a feast was given to celebrate the occasion. The weather was most lovely, and the merry birds were singing their melody to the charms of the scene. All the royal princes, nobles, and literati were assembled, and among them the emperor made his appearance, accompanied by the princess Wisteria, now empress, on the one side, and the Nyogo of Kokiden, the mother of the heir apparent, on the other, the latter having constrained herself to take part with her rival in the fate, in spite of her uneasiness at the recent promotion of that rival. When all the seats were taken, the composing of poems, as was the custom, commenced, and they began picking up the rhymes. The turn came in due course to Genji, who picked up the word spring. Next to Genji, Tō no Chiochio took his. Many more followed them, including several aged professors, who had often been present on similar occasions, with faces wrinkled by time and figures bowed by the weight of years. The movements and announcements both of Genji and his brother-in-law were elegant and graceful, as might be expected. But among those who followed there were not a few who showed awkwardness, this being more the case with scholars of ordinary accomplishments, since this was an epoch when the emperor, the heir apparent, and others of high distinction were more or less accomplished in these arts. Meanwhile they all partook of the feast. The celebrated musicians joyfully played their parts, and as the sun was setting, the spring lark sings, name of a dance, was danced. This reminded those present of Genji's dance at the Maple Fate, and the heir apparent pressed him to dance, at the same moment putting on his head a wreath of flowers. Upon this Genji stood up, and waving his sleeves danced a little. Tō no Chiochio was next requested by the emperor to do the same thing, and he danced the willow flower gardens most elaborately, and was honoured by the emperor with a present of a roll of silk. After them, many young nobles danced indiscriminately one after another, but we cannot give an opinion about them as the darkness was already gathering round. Lamps were at length brought when the reading of the poems took place, and late in the evening all present dispersed. The palace grounds now became quite tranquil, and over them the moon shone with her soft light. Genji, his temper mellowed by sake, was tempted to take a stroll to see what he could see. He first sauntered round Fuji Tsubo, the chamber of Wisteria, and came up by the side of the corridor of Kokiden. He noticed a small private door standing open. It seems that the Nogo was in her chamber at the Emperor's quarters, having gone there after she retired from the feast. The inner sliding door was also left open, and no human voice was heard within. Such are occasions on which one often compromises oneself, thought he, and yet slowly approached the entrance. Just at that moment he heard a tender voice coming toward him, humming, nothing so sweet as the overall moonlight. Genji waited her approach and caught her by the sleeve. It made her start. Who are you? she exclaimed. Don't be alarmed, he replied and gently led her back to the corridor. He then added, Let us look out on the moonlight together. She was, of course, nervous, and would fain have cried out. Hush, said he, know that I am one with whom no one will interfere. Be gentle and let us talk a little while. These words convinced her that it was Prince Genji, and calmed her fears. It appears that he had taken more sake than usual, and this made him rather reckless. The girl, on the other hand, was still very young, but she was witty and pleasantly disposed, 
and spent some time in conversing with him. He did not yet know who she was, and asked, "'Can't you let me know your name? Suppose I wish to write to you hereafter.' But she gave no decided answer. So Genji, after exchanging his fan with hers, left her and quietly returned to his apartments. Genji's thoughts were now directed to his new acquaintance. He was convinced that she was one of the younger sisters of the Niogo. He knew that one of them was married to a prince, one of his own relations, and another to his brother-in-law, Toino Chiocho. He was perfectly sure that his new acquaintance was not either of these, and he presumed her to be the fifth or sixth of them, but was not sure which of these two. How can I ascertain this, he thought. If I compromise myself and her father becomes troublesome, that won't do, and yet I must know. The fan which he had just acquired was of the colour of cherry. On it was a picture representing the pale moon coming out of a purple cloud, throwing a dim light upon the water. To Genji this was precious. He wrote on the one side the following, and kept it carefully with a longing for the chance of making it useful. The moon I love has left the sky, and where tis hid I cannot tell. I search in vain, in vain I try, to find the spot where it may dwell. Now it so happened that on a certain day at the end of March, an archery meeting was to be held at Udaijin's, in which numerous noble youths were to be present, and which was to be succeeded by the Wisteria flower feast. The height of the flower season was past, but there were two cherry trees beside the wisteria in the gardens which blossomed later. A new building in the ground which had been decorated for the occasion of the mogi of the two princesses was being beautifully arranged for this occasion. Genji also had been told one day at court by Udaijin that he might join the meeting. When the day came, Genji did not arrive early. Udaijin sent by one of his sons the following haughty message to Genji, who was at the time with the emperor. If the flowers of my home were of everyday hue, why should they so long a time have tarried for you? Genji at once showed this to the emperor, asking whether he had better go. Ah, said the latter, smiling, this is from a great personage. You had better go, I should think. Besides, there are the princesses there. Thereupon he prepared to go, and made his appearance late in the afternoon. The party was very pleasant, although the archery match was almost finished, and several hours were spent in different amusements. As twilight fell around, Genji, affected to be influenced by the sake he had taken, left the party and went to the part of the palace where the princesses lived. The wisteria flowers in the gardens could also be seen from this spot, and several ladies were looking out on them. I have been too much pressed. Let me take a little quiet shelter here, said Genji as he joined them. The room was nicely scented with burning perfume. There he saw his two half-sisters and some others with whom he was not acquainted. He was certain that the one he wished to ascertain about was among them, but from the darkness of the advancing evening he was unable to distinguish her. He adopted a device for doing so. He hummed as he looked vacantly around the Ishikawa, but instead of the original line, my belt being taken, artfully and in an arch tone, substituted the word fan for belt. Some were surprised at this change, while others even said, What a strange Ishikawa! One only said nothing, but looked down, and thus betrayed herself as the one whom he was seeking. And Genji was soon at her side. End of chapter 8